I worked with, in the BBC with James for 13 years and in those days there were 16 races a year and we would be together for four days at each of those races. So if you multiply 13 by 16 by 4 you get a very large number and those were the numbers of days that well, I suffered with uh, and, and enjoyed the company of James. But James was both a joy and an agony to work with. He was a joy to work with um, because he was a Formula One world champion uh, and he'd done something I'd never done. He'd been there and done that and won races and become world champion. Uh, he was also agony because uh, he didn't think like the rest of us. He was a free-thinking spirit. Um, I, I was old enough to be his father, Matt, and um, there were aspects of his life that I didn't admire. There was one occasion when the Belgian Grand Prix one year, when James didn't turn up at all. He didn't, not to be seen. Five minutes before the race, five minutes into the race, 25 minutes into the race for the whole of the race. And I, I did it alone. And we were getting anybody who'd retired from the race to come into the box and talk to me about it. And that was where Martin Brundle did his first ever commentary or talk on the radio. And that's where we started to discover how good he was. Um, but James never turned up. And he apologized afterwards, he said, uh, I'm terribly sorry I wasn't there. I was in bed with a stomach complaint. And I thought, it's the first time I've ever heard it called that. <laughs> but um, I wouldn't be saying these hard things about James if we hadn't actually rubbed the rough edges off each other and got to know each other uh, and got to like each other in the end. And he was a very special chap.